Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to day two. Uh, so I, I'm, um, I go to keynote yesterday morning, um, in which I basically used up all my, all my A material. Uh, so, so, so today you're, uh, how many of you were in the keynote yesterday? Okay, some of you were. So, so you see all my A material. Um, what I'm going to do today is something a little bit different. Um, it's just become a little bit more different in that I've discovered that my presentation is actually just the key in my car. So uh, uh, this, is, this is fetching that for me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through quite quickly, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, I'm going to go through quite quickly some of the things I said yesterday, which was basically a recap of all the cool stuff that's happened. What I tend to do before these, um, yesterday I committed, I think that this is now uh, the annual Raspberry Pi birthday bash, so I've committed to, a, to an infinity of future, uh, future Raspberry Pi birthday bashes. Um, a nice thing before these, before I give these presentations, is that I get a chance to go back through the blog and read everything that uh, has happened in a year. And there's, you know, people say that you underestimate. People underestimate what you can do in a day, and they underestimate what you can do in a year. And, and the interesting thing with Raspberry Pi is that it feels very often like we're not making progress at all. Day by day basis, you, you come into work in the morning and you go home and you think, what do we do today? And what will what, what happen? Um, and how do we move things forward? But if you stack up 250 working days like that on, on top of each other, you find at the end of the year that, that the team has managed to do really, really amazing stuff. So it's kind of fun to go through the block and, and see it all in, in, in one round. So um, I, I put together just a, a few pictures, that I've done with a few pictures in. Um, and this is kind of an excerpt of what I showed yesterday. Um, just to sort of the kind of the story of Raspberry Pi in, in uh, the, the uh, most 2015 and the first of 2016. Um, then what I thought I'd do is um, talk a little bit about some of the people uh, who've been involved in the technical engineering, the, the engineering activity around um, uh, around particularly around Raspberry Pi 3. People have this kind of idea. It, it's easy to think that Raspberry Pi is a thing that's, that springs fully formed from my head or from the head of the Raspberry the head, the combined heads of the Raspberry Pi is an in house engineering team. Uh, there's an enormous number of, any of you read the blog post on Monday, I have credits list, and effectively all I'm going to do is put the credits list up on the screen. And I'll just talk to you a little bit about what some of those people did. Uh, and, we, and some of the things, you know, some of the things uh, that we have to do, particularly the things we have to do with Raspberry Pi 3, uh, that we've never had to do before. Um, so I just thought that'd be fun. At the end, I'm hoping I'm going to leave enough time uh, to take some questions from the audience. So try to Okay, here we go. Um, right, so what did we do this year? Um, we launched a bunch of products. Um, we're still quite a small team, but we managed to launch a bunch of products. We managed to get the sense hat out. We managed to launch the display, uh, the case, and as I said yesterday, the display and the case are kind of buying a little bit from most of the main Raspberry Pi product. The case, because it turned out we knew nothing at all about injection molding, uh, retained a company that was just about injection mold traffic cone to uh, make our high quality, high quality Apple Watch case. Um, uh, fortunately, we then found another company in um, the West Midlands, which took some great people to understand the connections in the West Midlands. Uh, we turned out to they did a lot of work with Jackie Landrover and they made this beautiful case, so that was great. Uh, we managed to launch the display, that was an epic of um, uh, PCB design and conformance testing. It turns out that DPI, the interface to that display, is a nightmare from a performance point of view, so Gordon spent the whole year trying to find ways to wrangle one more DB. Uh, of uh, a signal reduction out of, uh, out of the DPI interface. But that's out there now, people are really enjoying it, people are using it to, to build all sorts of cool projects. So that one's fun. So we did, a, we did some new products. I'll talk about a couple of other new products that you're missing off that list later on. Hello. This is Liz. You are Liz, right? Thank you. This is my presentation on the key stick. Thank you. I'll use that a bit. Um, people, other people, so we did, <clears throat> we did lots of cool stuff with Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> other people did lots of cool stuff with Raspberry Pi. Um, there's, there's been no let up in the, uh, the rate of which people have been doing cool projects. This one's a particular favorite of me. This is a Mixi clock built by um, a son of a friend of mine in, uh, in Texas. Uh, he uh, very bravely took a uh, device with a, uh, a with counting, counting light up numbers into his school in Texas. Uh, didn't know he pointed the gun him. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, so that, that, that one's fun, and uh, I think Liz has been able to find for every wall that she puts on the clock, she's got two or three that she hasn't been able to put on the clock, so I mean, 
they just they just keep coming. The wonderful thing, <clears throat> we always talk about the transition in the nature of rock and past bomb over the course of the, the time we've been doing it, from being largely a blog about us to being largely a blog about other people, largely a blog about us to largely a blog about the community. Uh, this is the sort of thing, it's an absolutely fantastic example. Uh, good. Um, no, um, the presentation, excuse me. Um, <laughs> the presentation largely consists of slides cut from yesterday's presentation, the laptop hand from yesterday's presentation. So I cut the slides, I don't have the credit slide, which is why you can have slides like that. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks good off. We do have a small team, and in between, in between building bits of hardware like the display and the case uh, and the sense of that. Um, but we get a lot of software and work done. Um, what we do to highlight this year is the, the improvement to the usability of the rocking parts. So the rocking parts getting faster and faster and faster with every generation of release, um, as well as getting faster, we will also need to get more useful. Uh, this year, uh, so in, uh, in August of 2014, uh, we were joined by Simon Long, uh, who's a former colleague of mine at Broadcom, uh, with, a, with a background in user experience design. Um, uh, all of the lovely changes to the desktop you've seen are uh, kind of his responsibility. One of the things we oversaw this year was uh, this lady's. Uh, this lady is Jessie, as any of you who uh, watch Toy Story 2 will know. Um, we were able to move from uh, Raspberry Group uh, BT to, to Raspberry Jessie. Uh, that brought all the lots of, lots of cool new stuff and the general updating of all of our computer, updating of all of the packages for a while. Uh, so Raspberry Pi now, it's really worth going back actually, um, and if you're not an old Raspberry Pi, it's really worth going back <coughs> to running uh, the operating system from two or three years ago. And I've seen an enormous change both in terms of performance on your piece of hardware. Um, and in terms of usability of the device, particularly as we transition away from the kind of very ugly LXD world that you'll remember from the first two or three years to the rough one more than GTK world that we're running now. Um, we made this thing. Um, this, was a, uh, this is our sense hat, uh, packaged in a 3,000 pound mil aluminium box. It's a 2,000 pound mil aluminium box with 1,000 pounds of laser engraving on the outside of the laser engraving cards. Uh, I had to get to the laser engraving business. You know, so <laughs> definitely the wrong business maker. Uh, <clears throat> so this is our this is our aerospace grade Raspberry Pi um, Astro Pi case. Um, uh, John from Bell and Dave Hobus spent a lot of this year working on this project. Uh, spent a lot of time uh, <clears throat> doing paperwork, well, quite a lot of time doing engineering, and an enormous amount of time doing paperwork. Uh, finally got the paperwork ready uh, inevitably about the day before the last possible moment that the paperwork could be ready. Um, uh, we, we met this guy. Uh, I think this was a single. I'll be honest. It's pretty much the single best moment of Dave's life. Well, you can this goes on. Uh, Dave, Dave, got to meet, uh, <laughs> Dave got to meet this guy um, who we are resolutely prohibited from referring to as Major 10, uh, but he is Major 10. Um, he got to wear our t shirt. Uh, he got in one of these. Well, he didn't get a Russell Lyra, right? he didn't get one of these. This is, a, this is an Alice Fly with a, with a sequence on top. Uh, he put this in this, um, and then uh, he got it in the sort of I didn't have a picture of. Um, Dave, and, uh, Dave and Jonathan got to go to uh, Florida. We could promise them if they did the paperwork, we'd fly them to Florida, we'd them to Florida. They then sat in Florida for four days uh, as uh, um, ULA repeatedly scrubbed the launch. Matt actually didn't even, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt, <laughs> Matt Richardson is in the audience. He flew all the way to Florida. Uh, you got a nice turn, ULA gave you a nice turn because you're an American citizen, you've got to see things that are, are maybe, maybe British citizens see, but there you have to be before it flew. Um, Dave and Jonathan managed to see it from a lay-by on the side of the freeway uh, on their way back to the airport. And apparently they got 10 princely seconds before seeing it through the cloud deck. Um, <laughs> so that was nice, you know. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Um, uh, and anyway, it was all worth it, because we got this. Um, this is a picture. Um, uh, uh, Tim was so enthusiastic about um, Astro Pi. He unpacked it early. Very, very shortly after he arrived on station, we saw some pictures like this of um, the Astro Pi in, in the station mount. We see on the right hand side like, sort of open arm on that thing. This is a, sort of, kind of like an angled poise for, uh, for poising things inside the space station. That little plate on the right hand side you can see, you see our case and you see this plate here. A um, staggeringly expensive piece of hardware, a little piece of aluminium, a focal arm plate. We had to order from the one, the one set of people who are allowed to make focal arm plates. Now, as there are, is only one company that's allowed to make open arm plates. They can charge you whatever they want. It's extremely expensive. Like we own six of them, but it's like half the half the, the market, half the equity value of Raspberry Pi now is in open arm. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. Um, oh, we 
thinking, oh, this guy, uh, I deleted them all bluntly like yesterday. The people who were in yesterday, there was a wonderful picture of them. Uh, so I deleted after talking to them after yesterday's talk, I deleted that one. Um, this gentleman is Philip Colligan. He joined us from NASTA in July of last year, where he was, uh, he was uh, Deputy Chief Executive of NASTA. Uh, he's now the Chief Executive of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, he is making the Raspberry Pi Foundation do awesome things. Um, and you know, you're going to see, I think, particularly this year, a real uptick in the pace of which Raspberry Pi's as a foundation, as opposed to Raspberry Pi, the engineering company, are doing awesome things and trying to deliver on Raspberry Pi's mission. Um, about five seconds after he entered the building, he merged us with Code Club, which was kind of cool. Um, the, um, uh, many of you are at Code Club. Anyone, is there anyone in the room who attends Code Club? Hey, or runs Code Club, yes. Excellent. That's great. So, so Code Club is one of these, uh, is one of the most things about Raspberry Pi is it's not just us, right? There's, uh, there's, at the point where we started doing Raspberry Pi, we were in the trough, we were at the point, we were right at the nadir of interest in computer science. Uh, we had uh, hardly anyone applied to study computer science in Cambridge. We had a um, uh, we had a generation of children who were being educated, but computers were really not even a little boring. Um, and we were down there in 2008, and it was all a bit of a uh, disaster area. As we tried to solve the problem, a bunch of other people also uh, realized there was a problem trying to solve the problem. And so we've, as we've been making progress, and we have, I think, as a, as a group of organizations, made a lot of progress. Um, there have been other organizations kind of with us along the way. It has been a great time to do it. And one of the, um, you know, one of the um, most successful organizations in that space, and also an organization that kind of spookily really kicked off at about the time we, we started getting off in my for Ernest in 2012, is Code Club. Uh, it's a network of a very, very nearly 4,000. So hard to make. I think it's 3,958 or something. We really, really wanted that into the floor at the time. Just, the code is very steep now. It's only just kind of a, a matter of a week until we go across 4,000. 4,000 code clubs in the UK, over 500 uh, outside the UK now. Um, for 9 to 11 year olds, 40% of the participants are girls. Um, so this is this is very, very different from the, um, the sort of stereotype, the historical stereotype of who's interested in computers. Uh, you know, we know that if we keep girls interested in computing uh, until the age of 11, right? Then it's very, very likely that at you know, the age of 11 they're outperforming the boys. It's very, very likely that you know, they're going to give the boys a run for their money all the way through the, uh, all the way through. So that's nice. Um, we got to go to foreign, foreign places, which was nice. Uh, this is this is some of us. Uh, this is the Rosal Park Beard Squad in um, uh, uh, Lake Ferry, New York. Um, we, um, uh, we 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 do quite a few of these. We now have two U.S. employees. We have Matt and Neil Courtney. Who are in the room. Um, so, so over, over the course of 2015 and the start of 2016, we went from nobody in America to two people in America, so it's a very substantial percentage growth rate. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, the US has been our largest market for computers, it's been our largest market for Raspberry Pi for really quite a while. Um, and um, uh, it, it's only recently that we've been able to catch up with, that we've started to kind of scale our charitable activities in North America. To match the scale of the interest in Raspberry Pi, and we're kind of excited that uh, we just run our first uh, Pi Academy teacher training um, session uh, there, and that, that was it's been rapturously received, which is awesome. Um, the Magpie, um, many of you know about the Magpie, they have a stand outside, but he's going this way. Um, Magpie is really unusual, it's kind of uh, um, started as a uh, Started as a hobbyist magazine, very successful 30 years series as a hot as a, as a fan, fan produced magazine. I have no idea how the guys found the energy to produce 30 years series of a really nice produced magazine. Uh, started last year, um, Liz was pretty insistent that we should try and uh, uh, bring this in house. Um, we brought it in house, we recruited Russell, who's here at the front, um, to edit it. Um, we had a brief hiatus. We did a back up in print magazine for a while, we had a brief hiatus from the print magazine for a few months. Um, Electronic memory, uh, 70 pages uh, of, of, of content, and then we return to print with a 100 page magazine in June of one point. We were using that digital. Um, and that's been a big success. Uh, the, the, the funny thing about Magpie, Magpie, you know, is a, it's a commercial endeavor. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about, Raspberry Pi, about Magpie is that we give the content away for free on the first day. So you can, it's the only magazine of this sort that we're aware of um, where you can. You can download a free PDF on day one. We're very, very committed to that. We made that commitment to the team, uh, to, to build on the team 
when we um, uh, when, when we when we took it over. Uh, they'll always be the SEO is going to be a Mac market free on day one. Uh, people will just get a downloadable app and as a as a paper magazine. But what's been really surprising to us is if you produce a good enough piece of content, you can give it away for free and you can still make money doing it. Uh, and and then this has been this has been wonderful. We have a, a big subscriber base, you can buy it everywhere, you can buy it from North America now as well. Um, so this has kind of been the year of Mac Pie uh, and the year of Mac Pie publications. Um, you remember this, right? Uh, so we uh, we um, <coughs> When we launched the original Raspberry Pi, we, we divided the cost of computing by about a factor of one. I think about 125 dollars to save by I guess 125 dollars to make some money good. Um, from 125 dollars to 25 dollars, um, we did it again. Um, we never thought we'd be able to do it again, but a variety of things came together over the past year to mean that we were able to uh, design a Raspberry Pi. Mike Stokeson did the design for this, so this is the first Raspberry Pi product designed by Mike. Um, and we were able to put this out. It, and of course, the cool thing was we were able to see the whole front of the backpack. So, this is kind of an obvious example of where having our own publishing capability kind of collides with our ability to uh, build hardware uh, with the first computer. Uh, the first computer means you have to give away a computer as a cover gift, which kind of keeps uh, us <laughs> a CD for the uh, We gave away about 300,000 of these. So, we did about you know, uh, a run of the uh, first run of Project Pro Zero, so it was about 100,000 units, and about 20,000 of those went out. Stores or to, uh, to subscribers. Um, our subscriber base grew as, as a result of this. <laughs> uh, and then we did this. Uh, you all know it, London Odyssey Monday. This is absolutely fantastic. It was kind of, we tried really hard to get this out on our fourth birthday, um, and, and, and we managed. Um, obviously, just you know, one of them to know that you know, we were going to be five, five days into the Raspberry Pi 3, we were going to have a chance to give you all a gift. Um, I'm just going to, as I said, change horses. USB is one of these these connectors. It's a fractally dimensional connector. Like you had to turn, you click, you only have to turn it two times. You always have to turn it three. And find it at once. That's a literally first time in my entire life. What else has ever happened in my life? It's got short, short, short hands. <clears throat> it's important to be paying for that. So great looking presentation. <laughs> That was totally worth running for, I would say. Hello, but there we are. <coughs> okay, um, so we're going to move on with a slideshow from this slide. Um, <clears throat> like I say, Raspberry Pi doesn't spring fully formed from the minds, me or from the minds even of the people. So the people involved on the slide are people who work on Raspberry Pi. Um, but this is the entire crowd, so this is from Monday's blog post. Um, uh, most of these people, the majority of these people, each work at Raspberry Pi or they work at Broadcom and they do one of a variety of things. So I'd just like to talk about. First of all, talk about people, the people involved and what they what they worked on. Um, James Adams did the design. Um, Jonathan Bell did. Well, I'm just kind of making. Just Jonathan, Jonathan did what Jonathan does. So kind of uh, testing things and being skeptical about stuff. He's one of these guys who you can give him a board and he will dig into it and he will find exactly. Even if you, well, if it's not working, you'll find why it's not working, and if it is working, you'll find out why it really isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> So Jonathan's, Jonathan's steely eyed skepticism, he used to work in oil rigs, right? So he used to work in an environment where, you know, screwing up really uh, counts. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, if you join this large you'll think it's like flying around in helicopters over the North Sea and so he's a sensible chap as well. Um, uh, Don did film over Colonel. Uh, Don is probably, uh, uh, many of these people are ex broker colleagues of mine. Um, Don uh, uh, effectively volunteered long before he left Broadcom uh, to join. He was logging to spend his evenings and weekends and increasingly got all these Broadcom stuff as well on his projects. He's kind of our original Broadcom volunteer. Um, uh, Phil Elwell did uh, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and uh, the SD card driver. Um, we moved the SD card on Raspberry Pi 3 from, um, uh, from we have two SD card controllers on, on the board. We did now need one of them to talk to Wi Fi. Uh, we've moved uh, the, the, real, the actual SD card to the other controller. This actually has the last benefit of increasing the operation. The operating frequency of the SD card from about 42 megahertz to about 50 megahertz. There's so actually a 20% increase in SD card performance that we haven't really touted, but it's kind of a side effect of some of the changes we made. Um, uh, John Hogworth uh, is uh, John, John is John, is John, is John is 
friend, and uh, you know, various sort of stuff, you know, help, helping get this board, in particular some of the stuff around conformance, helping get this board from uh, being something that may one off to something that we served on maybe about three hundred thousand of. Uh, who else? Uh, Simon Long, user interface uh, and uh, operating system distribution. Uh, so Schneider, uh, packaging, operating system packaging. Uh, Mark Stimson, um, uh, uh, port design and uh, sort of hardware and things. Uh, Roger Thornton ran the conformance testing activity, uh, which was a um, uh, hundred thousand pound effort uh, in, in, in collaboration with my friends at Element. And he, yeah, he ran that. Figured out how to figure out how making a product with a radio on is incredibly hard. We thought making a product didn't have a radio on. There's only all, all electronic products and radios, right? And, you know, they all broadcast. Uh, uh, and, and getting that under control, as, as you, any of you who've been with us since 2012 know, is, is, is challenging. Uh, actually making something which really intends to be a radio and getting that through, that'll factor of 10 difference in time, and that'll factor, that factor of 10 difference in cost is 100,000 pounds down. Down the drain, invest in profit. <laughs> um, uh, Luke Graham, uh, um, yeah, he, he um, ate the officers like everything over the summer. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a, he was our, um, uh, our intern this summer. He did the original, uh, the original Wi Fi integration. So he's the first person to get Wi Fi up. Thank you very much. First one. Okay. Uh, uh, he's the first person to get Wi Fi up on the um, other people here, mostly Broadcom people, just call out a few of them, uh, uh, Dinesh, Cyrus, uh, Aravind, um, and where are you, Boom, in there somewhere. Um, they hold on the arms, they know from the arm holding team, so I thought they're the reason why we have such fast arms, the important say 53s on board. Uh, we have people like uh, Jeff Baer uh, and Cindy, uh, and uh, various other people here in there. James, uh, who did uh, the Brooklyn side of Wi Fi. Uh, we have guys in the office, well, the office team, guys like James Turner. Um, one of the nice things about the chip that we use on uh, Raspberry Pi 3 that has capacitors actually integrated into the package. Um, so the, we have decoupling capacitors which provide the short term power for the core. Uh, historically, we've only had ones on the other side of the PCB. One of the reasons why the core runs so fast is we actually now have some that sit inside the package. So that's kind of fun. Uh, and that was, that was James Turner. Um, and then there are some other people on the business side. Uh, guys like Scott McGregor, who's the uh, uh, former chief executive of Broadcom, uh, now a member of the Rock Pi Foundation, and a very, very long time supporter of ours. Um, and um, Stuart Thompson and Nils Christensen. Uh, Stuart's our PRM, and uh, Nils is uh, sales support for Rock Pi. He's the guy who actually allowed me, those are the guys who actually allow us to buy chips from Broadcom and put them in the product. Um, enormous number of people. Uh, the guys involved, it's their day job. They work on it 100 40 hours a week, but let's face it, it's not 40 hours a week. You know, they, they work on this 60 or 70 hours a week. Um, a lot of these other people, Raspberry Pi is only part of what they do. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's it just as it, we, just as Raspberry Pi as an organization, is critically dependent on everything that you do. Raspberry Pi as a foundation is not just the people who work for the foundation. So Raspberry Pi, the product, by the people whose names you can see on the sort of on the paper of So I thought I should share this because I think it's an important message that products as complicated as Raspberry Pi are be far beyond the capability of one person to produce. Um, and this is a real, you know, I think a lot of you who work in engineering, you know how big engineering teams are now. So sort of the younger people in the room who I hope aspire to be engineers when you when you grow up, um, you know, this is the sort of thing. You've got to have the technical skills that you're going to have to work with other people. Um, there we go. So that's roughly fine. Um, I'm sure I have two minutes yes. uh, to take questions. Um, bang on. Uh, anyone got any questions? The future. The future. We're going to make Raspberry Pi four, five, and six. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, like um, so, um, that's the thing about Raspberry Pi is we just be able to. When we, before we did Raspberry Pi, we talked about it. Time. Uh, now we can't talk about future products and we can't talk about future products for the obvious reason that it would also be a current product. Uh, I, I can say right now we don't have a we don't have a next plan. Uh, we think that Raspberry Pi 3 is Raspberry Pi 3 is turning out to be in practical terms about twice as fast as Raspberry Pi 2 in Britain in place. Uh, and 
So I think we are going to, on the hardware side, we're going to take a breather. I think you're going to see us do a lot more software. Mm. Yes? I think I've read somewhere that you can make 800,000 monthly funds to your client. That's about right, isn't it, Pete? How much? Him and her. Um, uh, the question was, was uh, that we built about 800,000 800,000 pies before we hired our first employee. Um, yeah. the, uh, a good hardware design by Peter back there that didn't require very much in the way of, uh, it didn't require failure analysis, right? So it didn't fail, so it didn't require failure analysis, and that's where you've got a post product launch headcount goes, and you kind of coast for a little bit on that. Uh, it's also slightly disingenuous in that uh, this was working for a full time unpaid. Uh, so, um, so we had a full time unpaid volunteer uh, for that period of time. And we were also, some of the people on that list were starting to spend a, a distracting amount of their evenings a weekend. So, uh, it's technically true. From day one, we had a community help which was absolutely yeah. true. Anyone else? I'll probably have more than one. Right. Yeah, um, Raspberry Pi Zero, um, we continue to struggle to make enough Raspberry Pi Zeros. Um, y yes, we, yes we, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero is only a meaningful product if you can get lots of them, and we are working on that. Um, we think that it should be feasible by the end of the year for us to deliver um, yeah, the zero, zero on SD card, the cable, the cable adapters, which is kind of, kind of quant for, for someone who wants to use it as anything other than a kind of deep embedded system. It's kind of a quantum of stuff. It should be feasible for us to provide those in enough quantities that everyone else can use them. Yeah, which is great. It's a lovely little product, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely product. Uh, and there are a lot of them in the wild, but it seems like demand is continuing to outstrip supply. Okay, jolly good. Well, thank you very much for coming out so early in the morning. Uh, thank you all for all of your efforts on.